Um, let, let's get right into because we got a lot of stuff to get into. Yes, we got we a lot do. of stuff, and it's, especially as it entails you directly and in a good way. But before we even get into that, I got to ask you right now. Yeah. You know about this case, and we've talked about this case against Sean P. Diddy Combs, obviously being accused of sexual assault, sexual trafficking, engaging in other criminal activity. Um, you've seen all of this take place, all of this come in motion. What were your thoughts when you first heard about it? Well, you know, Stephen, I can't say I'm surprised. Unfortunately, you know, we are still very much uh, as a society and as a culture um, dealing with the uh, continued reckoning, as it will, with, with Me Too. So we know it, no industry is untouched. Uh, and so there was just a matter of time before we saw more of it as it relates to hip hop. Um, so the allegations are horrendous. Uh, we all kind of, I think, were rocked a bit in late November 2023 when we saw the original uh, Cassie of it all, which which really started what became a snowball mm -hmm. um, of what we've seen thus far. There's at least six uh, current litigation uh, spaces in which he's named. And the most recent being where he's a named defendant, not accused of sex assault, uh, but of aiding and abetting the sex assault of allegedly his son. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about... Uh, Christian Combs. That's right. Yeah. So, so it's it's sad. It's heavy. Uh, of course, all allegations at this point. He's not been convicted of anything. Um, in fact, he's not been criminally charged. That's right. Of anything. And I what think are we to make of that? What do we yeah. make about the fact that it's been going on for weeks now? We've yeah. seen Homeland Security raid his homes in both Miami and Los Angeles. Yeah. But no arrest has taken place because of your legal mind, your legal expertise. What mm -hmm. do you make about the fact that no charges? have been have been leveled against him as of yet. I, I don't make much of it, Stephen. Yeah. The, the feds are fedding. That's what that tells me. The federal government is we we've been aware for weeks. I assure you this has been going on for months in terms of the investigation, uh, months of uh, co uh, collecting evidence, co uh, getting witnesses to collaborate particular stories and testimonies. Uh, what we're seeing now are kind of probably the final stages mm -hmm. of what this investigation looks like. We know the recent, uh, you're talking about the home, and I want yes. to get back to the Homeland Security Homeland piece, Security. not the FBI. That's right. All federal agencies, but they're a little different. I want to spend some time there in a second, put a pin in it. Uh, but the fact that they specifically, Stephen A, recently collected cell phones, other electronic devices, uh, that's kind of the end of the road, as we say. Those are going to be the final pieces that they're looking to corroborate probably some pre-existing testimonials for some for I would imagine a, a long list of potential witnesses. Let's go there for a second. When we talk about Homeland yeah. Security, yeah. the difference between local PD, mm -hmm. FBI, mm -hmm. Homeland Security, what are we to make of the fact that Homeland Security is the one that raided these homes as opposed to the FBI or local police? It, it, that part is fascinating to me. Now, now that's where I'm interested, really, really interested, because normally we would see uh, sex trafficking, racketeering. It sounds a lot like recently what we saw with R. Kelly. Uh, it sounds like other things we've seen in the headlines. Uh, the fact that it's not the FBI and it's Homeland Security. Homeland Security, Stephen A., is a relatively new federal uh, division. Okay. Uh, we just got it post 9-11. It is a direct result of 9-11. So it triggers certain things, right? It normally triggers terrorism, to be quite direct, uh, issues around border, border control, border safety. So, so when you think of some of these civil litigations that name Puffy right now, some of them also include uh, the illegal selling of arms, mm -hmm. the illegal selling of drugs, in addition to the sex trafficking. So um, I don't want to put the cart before the horse. We don't want to do uh, any, any too, uh, too much speculation here, but there's something awry mm -hmm. where they're thinking that there is something dealing with the border issue and potentially a foreign threat of some nature. It, it's got to be in the mix for them to go with Homeland Security. And the one, the one thing that comes to my mind is when we're talking about sex trafficking, obviously, that's correct, something that could correct, be correct. of an international variety and obviously it entails crossing the borders and that might be the justification I, I think as to why Homeland, Homeland Security got involved. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at the case's former girlfriend, Cassie Ventura. Mm -hmm. uh, she brought against him. It was settled a day after that it was filed. Is that what set all of this in motion in your estimation? It did. I can't help it. When you read it, I, I think of what my grandmother would have said, a day late and a dollar short. Yes. Um, but, <laughs> right. yes. but, one, but, day. Um, one, one day. One day. Well, and, and let's, let's kind of just name it, right? The one day says that obviously uh, Mr. Combs and his legal team might have thought this was a bluff. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes this happens uh, when you're on the back end, uh, meaning you're, you're on the um, legal representation side of mm -hmm. these types of lawsuits, Stephen A. Know that before somebody walks that lawsuit and gets it filed in the clerk of court, there have been numerous what we call pre-litigation conversations. Mm. Lawyers picking up the phone, calling your legal team. Well, do we have an opportunity to settle this? Well, I don't think so. Well, all of that led to no uh, resolution 
which is why the lawsuit was actually filed and then settled a day later. It tells me, Stephen A., that they likely thought that the lawsuit would never actually see the light of day, mm. that there would be so much probably fear, anxiety, hesitation, that some of the, I mean, let's just say, uh, horrendous and horribly egregious details mm. that we all read in that mm. very lengthy lawsuit from mm. Cassie uh, would never want to be exposed. The fact that there was a willingness to finally go there publicly uh, prompted the quick, very quick, 24 hours. I don't think I've ever yes. seen something publicly so quick, uh, the settlement there. And yes, to answer your question, it set everything in motion. It opened the door, as we say, uh, to now what we're seeing as, as a litany of, of uh, civil litigation attempts. Another woman, mm -hmm. Joey Dickerson Neal. Yes. She filed the lawsuit a day before the Adult Survivors Act expired. Yes, she First did. of all, explain the Adult Survivors Act, please, and its relevance. I can. Um, so I just recently um, uh, stepped aside from my tenure. I served six years, Stephen A., on a board of directors for a wonderful organization called Safe Horizon. Uh, we are the largest victims advocacy group uh, for services of victims of violent crime uh, in the country. <clears throat> we specialize on New York. Uh, I named the organization because we were very vital in leading what became a legislative effort. So I want to be very clear. The uh, Sexual Survivors Act is a law. It is specific to the state of New York, mm. and it allows a look back window of one year. It says that if you have been abused and, and you want to be able to prove that in a court of civil law, so none of this is criminal, no. this is civil. These are lawsuits, civil litigation remedies. Uh, you have one year to bring your claim. A claim that previously would have not been viable due to statutes of limitations. Mm -hmm. So you could have been alleging that you were <clears throat> assaulted or harmed uh, 20, a decade 30, ago. 40 yes. years ago. Well, literally. Dickinson Neal claims that nearly 32 years ago the incident with her and, and PGD go took place. Uh, let's think about, uh, what's it, Jean Carroll, uh, who okay. recently won her lawsuit against Trump. I think it's on appeal again now. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, fit, what, 40 years ago, something mm -hmm. plus, all of a result of this look back window. Um, so this young lady, Joy, uh, was able to file one day before the expiration mm -hmm. of that. And I think people thought there were going to be more. I'll tell you, in the legal community, Stephen A., we were expecting even more people to come forward right before that look back window. I got to ask this question. Not how, you. I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to figure out how. L listen, listen, I, I, let me be very, very clear. Yeah. Anybody guilty yeah. of any kind of crime, particularly violating a woman, violating another human being, they, they, they throw them under the jail. Please let me be very, very clear about that. I'm just trying to figure out how you could say mm -hmm. 32 years ago mm -hmm. or 40 years ago, this happened and, and somehow, some way that can be quote unquote proven in a civil court of law that in Trump's case cost him uh, supposedly over four hundred million, four hundred fifty-four million dollars to be exact. Yeah, um, could obviously cost uh, P. Diddy a boatload of money. How does that work in the eyes of those who don't understand that somehow, some way, twenty years ago, thirty years ago, forty years ago, we give you this one-year window for yeah. a look back, and something may have happened in nineteen eighty-eight. We coming for you. Listen, since you're being clear. Yes. Let me be clear. Please. Okay. Let me be very, very clear. Uh, nobody's saying, Stephen A., that these uh, civil claims 20, 30, 40 years after the fact are not going to have challenges. Mm. They're going to have severe challenges. Uh, now, in the Trump claim, listen, tw uh, 12 people in a box heard the testimony, saw the evidence, and decided they felt that there was liability there. Mm. Um, only those jurors, let's be clear, only those jurors um, can tell you exactly what they found yes. believable. Uh, but as it relates to Mr. Combs, uh, as well as, you know, anybody else here, uh, you've got in 20, 30 years, people people get fo foggy memories. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people pass away. So your ability to your point to prove the viability of your claim becomes more and more difficult with each passing day. Mm -hmm. OK, sometimes it's hard to get people to show up and remember things within the year. Mm -hmm. So the more you add to that, the longer the distance, uh, it, the, the, you know, the more difficult DNA is mm -hmm. uh, to gather, all those evidentiary pieces become challenged. However, here's one of the uh, benefits to having um, a longer time to bring your claim. We have more technological advances. Mm -hmm. um, so this is why you have like a cold case file that yes. all of a sudden something you just couldn't prove uh, scientifically 10 years ago, 15 years ago, might be provable today. Mm. Um, if there was indeed evidence collected at that time that we can prove the chain of custody was valid and everything. And now all of a sudden you've got an opportunity to prove something scientifically that was not available to you 
previously. I'm looking at these cases against mm-hmm. P. Diddy because I want to get on to you in a second, but I'm thinking about his son. Oh, no, let's stay on plus. I, 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 I'm <laughs> going I'm, I'm to get to you in a second, but his son, yeah. obviously, we already spoke about that. Yeah. Usher and some of the things he alluded to seeing when he sure. was a kid, yeah. you know, you know, being around P. Diddy. Obviously, Justin Bieber, you've heard his name brought up on many occasions mm-hmm. and, and being around P. Diddy. This guy, Little Rod, who was a producer for Combs, you know, he filed, you know, he filed a suit against uh, P. Diddy. All of these things going up against him. Have you seen anything? I mean, I'm thinking the days of Jeffrey Epstein. We know what happened with him. We know that uh, R. Kelly's in jail for uh, with a 30 year Mm -hmm. sentence at the very least. Um, We see Harvey Weinstein. We we know what happened with him. Is this legitimately along those lines in your estimation or is it a bit embellished or exaggerated in any way? Well, I can't speak to if it's embellished or exaggerated, okay. Stephen A. I will say a lot of these facts are looking similar. There's patterns here. And I think when we zoom out, let's talk about it from a culture. I'm going to take the legal hat off for one second sure. put the cultural hat on. Sure. I think what we are seeing are um, case after case after case. And, and we're seeing it that it, it, it spans race. We're seeing black men and white men. We're seeing uh, men in, uh, you know, we've certainly seen it in sports. We've seen it in entertainment. We've seen it in finance. So we've, we're seeing across industries, across races, what do these men have in common? They're all extremely wealthy and they all hold a significant amount of power, mm. right? And I think that there were things that were deemed acceptable, mm. things that were commonplace uh, at a particular time and era that are simply no longer acceptable, Stephen A. Mm-hmm. Now, we could argue and litigate whether they should have ever been acceptable. Of right. course, we sitting here as good, reasonable folks would say that these things should have never taken place. Right. But we know that they did. We know that there was a time in which we, we lived in a look-the-other-way culture, in a uh, boys-will-be-boys culture, in a um, rich-people-will-do-what-rich-people-can-get-away-with culture. Mm-hmm. It seems to be clear, very, very, very clear, that that era is is now bygone and now that the chickens are coming home to roost. And I think when you look at public opinion, Stephen A., I think you've got two primary camps. You have people that say it is what it is just because, you know, it's kind of the yesterday's price ain't today's price. Right. Yesterday's standard of appropriateness is not mm-hmm. today's standard mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, uh, off with their heads. Mm-hmm. And then you've got another camp that says, well, hey, wait a minute, you know, um, these things are deplorable to us today. We've mm-hmm. evolved as a society. There are things that you couldn't say. 10 years ago, 15 years ago right. on air, you know, you've been in the, uh, you know, the, the higher echelons of our business for a long time. There are things that you could have said 15, 20 can't years ago. Can't say it. Can't even think it right. today. That's right. right? Um, and people are saying that the retroactive punishment of things uh, just because we've evolved is not fair. There's something unjust about that. Mm. So I find that piece of it interesting. Um, how are we to determine uh, what justice looks like in, a, in real time as it relates to things retroactively. 